Welcome to BlindBargains.com coverage of CSUN 2017. From braille displays to video magnifiers, we're bringing you the dish on the hottest new products, apps, and more. Brought to you by the American Foundation for the Blind. Are you willing to share your skills and knowledge of the workplace as a person who is blind or visually impaired? Become an AFB Career Connect mentor and help job seekers find their path to success. Sign up today at www.careerconnect.org. Now, here's JJ Meadow. Here at the CSUN 2017 Exhibit Hall, and this is one of the most anticipated interviews uh, that we've been asked to do this year. I've tracked down Alex Lee, who's Director of Sales and Marketing for Dot Incorporation. Yes, the Dot smartwatch. I'm looking at it here. It's working. It's going to ship pretty soon. And uh, now that I've built this up for you, Alex, uh, you can talk about it. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invite, first of all. I mean, we flew out here from Seoul. Uh, I myself grew up in Orange County around here, so it's good coming back home. People are so nice around here. I love the weather. To get into what we have for you today, uh, it's the most retail-ready or retail-close uh, models of the Dot Watch. Uh, it's been a journey for you, hasn't it? Yeah, most definitely. It's been a long road. Last year, actually, uh, we were just working with prototypes. Uh, I believe that we actually had to take something from our lab and just kind of display it like a science project. Yeah, and hope it worked half the time. Yeah, and- hoping. Uh, everyone had their fingers crossed even back in Seoul. Sure. But we have a functioning thing. I was looking at it a minute ago. You have four working Braille cells on the top and a couple buttons. So describe the physical description of it. So if you uh, if you were to hold it in your hand, um, the seamless kind of construction, it appeals with aluminum body. Right now, we have the orange crown on the side as well as the uh, accompanying buttons on the top and the bottom on the right side of the watch. So you have this... Uh, top button, which uh, serves as a confirm or a select button. Right below that, in the middle, you have a crown, which we call the dot crown. Okay. It's going to be orange, and uh, it accesses menus uh, down, up and down the watch. Uh, right now, we have two menus at the top, uh, Bluetooth and, and a battery checker. At the bottom, we have a notification management, a uh, timer, and a, bl- and a stopwatch. And, you know, some of those challenges, and we'll talk about this, getting into how do you represent things on four cells. I noticed on, like, for instance, the battery gauge. It is kind of a visually Braille battery gauge, right? Sure. I mean, it's been a challenge to utilize the maximum amount of space that we have with the four cells. But However, we, uh, we wanted to break it down by uh, the actual pins, too. So we're looking at 24 pins that we could play around with, not just four cells either. Sure. So in terms of graphics, what we did was to first look at the battery as a bar and to kind of represent that in the 24 pins. So, of course, with the uh, little indented divider, we're able to uh, represent 50%, 60% of the battery uh, just with a single touch. Uh, I believe that is very self-explanatory. We didn't make it uh, very complex for our users. Sure. So, yeah, simple things like the time, of course, that fits perfectly just about on four cells, hour and minute. Uh, And then there's also a way you press the button to get the seconds, which update in in real time. And you can show other things like the uh, the date. I will say, in looking at the Braille cells, the the pitch between uh, each dot is standard, what you would expect. And then the pitch between the Braille cells is a little more space than what you might be accustomed to, but not so much that it was off-putting, at least Mm. to my touch. Okay. So I wanted to add that uh, our actual retail model is going to have a little more pronounced pins. Okay. So we we understand what the user experience demands with uh, the Braille format and as well as the market standards that are out right now. We don't want to deviate too much from what the users actually expect out of a device like this. So when we uh, we make the adjustments on uh, Braille height and the width and the spacing and things like that, I think it only takes uh, just a little bit of time to... uh, really get used to what we have to offer here. Sure. And this is still, it's a close version, but still a prototype of some sort that we're looking at here? Uh, it's going to be a pretty retail version that we're labeling it right now. But again, it's been updated to the latest firmware. Uh, I was telling you how the mobile app kind of controls the firmware update. So we were actually updating as we go in San Diego. Uh, we, we were here coordinating with our software team back As you Seoul. get feedback. and Exactly. And then uh, updating it relevantly. What are the actual controls? There's a couple buttons on the side and then what else we have? Yeah, as I was mentioning before, we have a uh, confirm or select button on the yep. top, mm-hmm. uh, which controls the time and the uh, seconds and time format uh, rotation. 
the dock crown that uh, allows you to scroll through different uh, options. It's like a little dial different. that you can turn. Exactly, and yep. that tells you the menus. At the bottom, it's a home button, which uh, actually serves as a uh, power off and on button, as well as it, a single click will clear the cells. Okay. So it kind of returns you back home. So sure. if you wanted to look at the time and then get rid of it, then you just press clear. And then, exactly. And so good. it drops off yourself. Sure. Yeah. And then if you're reading something, obviously you're not reading novels on this thing. But if you wanted to read perhaps a text or a longer phone number, there's uh, some controls on the top as well to kind of scroll. Sure. Um, I wanted to actually tell you about this because uh, it's... One of the features that we uh, we realized is a core function is uh, how to read messages. We touted it as a smartwatch. So if we could just link the phone to the watch and saying that, oh, okay, so your time is linked. That doesn't really say that it's a smartwatch, right? Right. So what we have to do is uh, really have a, a intuitive kind of uh, scrolling function with the watch. So right now you mentioned four cells. So we want to keep uh, people on the fly. We want them to keep moving. So, of course, we don't want uh, our visually impaired uh, peers to read entire emails off of this. That wasn't the design core function of this. Uh, what we have to offer is two touch sensors at the bottom of the watch face, which allow you to uh, scroll um, assisted by the touch sensor. So you could click uh, twice backwards to scroll backwards. Uh, scroll next uh, by doing the same thing on the right side of the watch face or uh, once you receive a message you could click the top button one time and it will scroll automatically at a rate that you choose or is that is there a you have a companion app or how do you set up things exactly like so the mobile app uh, the dot watch app is now available in the iOS store as well as the Google Play Store and uh, the braille scrolling speed can be definitely adjusted to your liking on a single bar that we have uh, on the w- mobile app so how does the integrations work? I'm assuming it's not going to work in every app, but how, are there certain apps that work well? So this question has been uh, pretty much um, on everyone's mind. Yeah. Is, uh, what, what, how much can I access? Uh, how much can I go into my phone with the, with the watch? You know? mm-hmm. So can I access my Facebook, uh, Facebook contacts? Can I access my contact book and things like that? I am, uh, how would you say, I regret to tell you that right now we don't have input functions with the watch. So here's what it could do. It could uh, relay the messages in the form of notifications. So whatever your phone has in terms of if you, if you lock it, uh, and then let's say you get a text message, then mm-hmm. it will have it as a notification bar once you uh, open the phone up. Can you again. unlock the phone from the watch? Uh, unlocking? No, not yet. There's something I could definitely bring it up with the development team. Okay. You could accept and deny calls right now, though. I was wondering about that. If an incoming call comes in, mm-hmm. I, right now I have to pull out my phone from my pocket to see who's sure. calling. Can I can I scroll the number on the watch? Yeah, once the uh, phone the phone call comes in, of course you'll get a vibration feedback. Uh, you'll know that it's ringing. And from there, the Braille display will function, and uh, you'll be able to tell who's calling. So at right away, it's gonna, is it going to show like the first four numbers? Of the- exactly, something like that. Awesome. Uh, uh, we're still playing around with the actual format of display, and uh, we could always update to your liking. And it almost might be, depending on some people, maybe someone would want to see the first four numbers. Maybe someone knows it's mostly local calls, and they want to see the last four numbers. Exactly. So, or the first four letters of the person's name. Yeah. So, so maybe that's a setting. I think the mobile app has, uh, we have enough software space to actually play around with settings like that uh, for the future. We could seamlessly integrate that into the watch. Is that going to work as well on iPhone? as Android. I know Android probably gives you a little more uh, direct access to certain things that perhaps Apple locks down. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, um, in, in terms of development, we, we've had a, we have had a much easier time putting our app on the Google Play Store, of right? course. Yeah. But then we've just recently, while we were in San Diego, uh, we got an email from our software guy saying that it, it is available now in iOS. Awesome. So, that was a big milestone for us. So one thing that uh, we offer with the mobile app, again, it's, the whole point is customization. Mm-hmm. But one thing is, again, uh, the phone itself feeds the notification to your liking. So if you want to right. uh, uh, stop your Facebook notifications from happening, then you make that call. You know? right. And we just serve as a platform for relaying the, the how you say, the messages and the notifications that, that you select that uh, you want to receive. So, 
as a watch, if you have it disconnected, I'm assuming it connects to your Bluetooth, right? Sure. So if you disconnect it from your your device, then you're left, but you can still read the time and do some basic things. Yeah, um, just like a regular watch, uh, you are able to set the time and the date and the year uh, as soon as you open the box. You don't have to uh, set it through the Bluetooth system. Um, however, it is recommended, of course, that you download the app first and uh, sync with it. And, and then it will sync the time for you exactly. automatically. Yeah. Okay. But we, we do think about the UX enough where uh, it could serve as an analog watch. Are you planning on doing an API, which, in other words, way for people to code in if I wanted to, say, add watch support to the Blind Bargains app or yeah, other ways for, sure. for people to come um, better? One of the two banners that we have for you here today, I would love to read it. Um, one of the four items that I highlighted uh, as a function is going to be open source platform. So this means that we are able to uh, work with the SDK and various APIs that uh, might um, help us harness the technology into different ways. And uh, there's different routes that we could kind of direct the software to. Is uh, one of the major, how to say, goals right now and major priority that uh, we have in development is localization. Mm -hmm. So in order to uh, kind of help with different languages, uh, we've been uh, discussing how to actively uh, spread and distribute the APIs uh, and our Braille dictionary and things like that. Sure. And I mean, several of them come to mind, which you're probably getting, you're probably hearing a lot or exploring uh, connecting, say, with Blind Square for GPS sure, or sure. connecting uh, media player controls, uh, fitness controls, mm -hmm. things like that. So I'm, I'm sure you've, you're exploring some of those possibilities even while you're here at the conference, right? Right. Thanks for that. I mean, uh, I'm writing so many things down as we, as we wrap up the last day here. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, it, uh, there's been so many great uh, concrete feedbacks that we've been getting. And one of the major things is, again, uh, it's improvement and it's upgrading and it's uh, innovating. And we could do that not just with the hardware now. It's, uh, it could be directed towards software. And, and again, with notifications, um, people fail to realize, I think, is the possibilities of uh, notification management. Is, uh, True. And, I, and on both platforms now, it's pretty customizable. You can sit, you do the same way by apps, and a lot of apps have even more fine exactly. grain control. Exactly, and um, if if we were to set something with uh, Google Maps, and uh, not there's no GPS on the watch, right? But right. then there's GPS on your smartphone. And since it's paired, then uh, we can access the uh, real-time feeding of directions through the dot watch uh -huh. if we play around with the not notification settings here and there. Are there any sensors on the watch? Can you use it as a, a fitness watch directly, or would you have to somehow pair it to something else? Currently, not in this iteration. However, uh, the reason being that the first version of the dot watch right here was to serve as a platform to really showcase our cell technology, which is going to be a different option that the users have to the traditional piezo electric type. Sure. How does it look? Is it is it fashionable? I mean, a watch is often a fashion statement. Um, does it look like a, a blind person's watch, like some of those gaudy talking watches? Oh, most it? not. I mean, again, I wanted to uh, point out the fact that the body is entirely made out of aluminum. Mm -hmm. The top of the watch face is uh, very um, a slight off-white, but it is clean white, uh, plastic matte. So... The uh, the whole watch is a mix of white, uh, orange at the crown, and middle and the back covers are aluminum. Okay. Uh, the watch bands are entirely able to be accessorized uh, to your liking. Right now we have a couple colors that we have on the stands, gray, green, uh, pink, black. Uh, things like that. So, are they standard watch bands as, as far as, or would they ones you would get directly from you guys, or are they ones that you would go to a jewelry store? And uh, currently, we are we're keeping it in house for now. Okay. Uh, we're we're experimenting with different kind of styles. So, uh, we're thinking about maybe different tactile representations uh, that are uh, going to be a little more stylish, of course. And right now, we've had the honor of being uh, uh, award winners for IFA, uh, Clio Awards, uh, Can Lions and LIA. So those are all very prominent and prestigious industrial design awards. So it is definitely stylish. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that you're, you're going to want to show it off. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a conversation piece and it's going uh, to instill a sense of ownership that it is yours. It's not rented. It's something that you, you, you made it happen and it's customizable. It, uh, you, your kind of strap is definitely uh, able to happen. Uh, we have something like a watch case uh, okay. We're thinking about vintage uh, casing, maybe opening up like a pocket watch, uh, maybe going away with the whole strap. I mean, uh, the watch strap, yeah. 
and maybe doing a necklace model, maybe a, posh, a po- pocket wash model, sure. like a link uh, to your belt or something okay. like that. What about uh, water resistance or waterproofness? Uh, currently, the uh, it, it's still kind of sensitive. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Right. Uh, it's uh, waterproof. Uh, I, we would love to add that. So our R and D guy. There's a challenge there, right? Especially with Braille yeah, and, and exactly. dots going up and down. And... Yeah, it, it is sensitive, and uh, we our priority in the hardware division is going to be uh, giving us a cell that is going to be waterproof, six cell waterproof, eight cell waterproof. So those are uh, definitely under sketching. So right I'm looking now. at this, yeah. The way this, the four cells are spaced out, if you put them a little closer together, it almost seems like you could do six. Yeah, exactly. You know, and obviously, you, know, you can't go too much more than that. Oh, sure. But, you know, it, perhaps there is room in the future to Yeah, again, I mean, uh, comments like yours, I mean, uh, we're definitely taking notes, and we're going to have uh, many, many meetings after this uh, when we return sure. to Seoul. Sure. Um, battery life? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks? Yes. Off of uh, the single charger, we have a magnetic cradle that uh, connects via Bluetooth. Uh, it's a seamless uh, kind of. It's very flush with the back panel, so you just kind of snap it on. Uh, okay. There's no. So it is a custom charger, though. Yeah, it's okay. a custom charger for us, and uh, again, it's magnetic, and uh, it takes about an hour and a half, to two hours to charge okay. from empty, and it lasts for anywhere from 12 to 14 days, and that is not an uh, overstatement because uh, we did extensive amount of IQC uh, that led us to this number. Sure, and of course, less if you're if you're using it 10 hours a day, that's going to be a lot of it, but you know. The watch is a type of thing that you're you're probably you're using it for quick glances, right? For lots sure. of things. Sure. And um, the thing is, uh, the uh, to disclose a little bit about how our testing went with the battery, it was uh, fully 24/7 connected to our respective smartphones right. via Bluetooth, and we we're just checking our messages every time that we got a message okay. uh, with our regular regular everyday life, mm-hmm. and we we're just checking the time every time that we wanted to. Uh, just like an average person, mm-hmm. so um, that led us to twelve to fourteen. Have days. you uh, have you learned bra- the numbers in Braille now? Uh, yeah. So you can you could you could look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me yeah, the time. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just testing the product. It, it kind of instills that kind of uh, responsibility then. for us. Do you have to look at it, or have you actually been able? I to still have to look at right. it. Right. It's, it's a hard. It's like it's, it's an acquired skill to actually try right, to touch right, right. the Braille. I mean, but I feel like I mean, it's just another language. So I mean, uh, why not? You know. So yeah. it's just uh, 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 it's just like a Rosetta Stone, I guess, for us. <laughs> sure. Well, cool. So lots of developments. So you've been doing this pre-order, um, but you're now finally to the point, uh, as we said, the, the long journey, you're, you're about ready to be selling these things, right? Sure. Uh, right now, we do have a revamped version of the website, www.dotincorp.com. That's D-O-T-I-N-C-O-R-P.com. It's been uh, revamped. Uh, we're actually actively updating as we go. Even every day, we're looking at it. So customer service platforms, uh, uh, different media that you could uh, download manuals, you could uh, look at videos, and of course they're narrated. Uh, we have a UX team that is uh, in charge of actual accessibility fun- functions of the website, okay. things like that. Uh, and the final step, of course, just like you mentioned, is the purchasing platform. So right now uh, we're looking at uh, enabling PayPal, uh, but as we explore other options, with the U.S. market as well as the global market space, uh, we have to think about other purchasing platforms as well. Awesome. So when do we get to the point, I, I know you have a lot of uh, pre-orders to fulfill, uh-huh. when is it the point when you're actually going to be shipping and I could order one today and you'd ship it tomorrow? Uh, okay. In terms of shipping and capacity, we're still working with our uh, factory back in Korea. Uh-huh. Uh, again, it's uh, we have to build the machines straight from the ground. So that, is, that wasn't an easy feat. So uh, we call it mass production, but the massive numbers of demand, uh, it's going to take some time for us to estimate and process uh, in terms of capacity, production capacity. So uh, realistically, we're looking at about um, early to about second week of April. Okay. And of course, they're available. They'll be available from your website, and hopefully, you'll find some distributors in other sure. countries. Sure, uh, we're always down to talk talk to uh, I would say prominent partners, uh, people that could help us uh, reach our vision. Sure. And no matter where we are in the world, uh, right now we are looking at the UK market as a testing, uh, not testing, launching market, of mm-hmm. course. And uh, we're also talking with uh, individuals in Australia. Cool. And uh, how much is it going to cost uh, for the US side market? Uh, we're looking at about three hundred. Okay. Uh, 290 has been floating around, so right. we would love to keep it under 300 as well. So for the end user without tax. Go ahead and give that website one more time. Along, I think you have a Twitter and some of the things as well, right? Yeah, for sure. So you can reach us at www.dotincorp.com. So that's www.dot. 
I-N-C-O-R-P.com. Uh, our Twitter handle is at D-O-T underscore I-N-C-O-R-P. That's dot underscore in corp. You can shoot us an email at dot at dot in corp dot com. Spelled just like uh, how I've been saying for the last five seconds. That must be the fun to say the website. Dot, dot. No, but this dot's spelled <laughs> right. out and that one's not. Thank you so much for <laughs> noticing that. I yeah, mean, yeah, it's, it's a spiel now, so. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're pretty it's, it's part of the shtick. It's right, right, right. Hey, thank you so much. I know people a lot, but they're excited to see this one. They're thank happy you, JJ. To it, was, uh, it was great presenting this. Exclusive audio coverage, visit blindbargains.com or download the Blind Bargains app for your iOS or Android device. Blind Bargains audio coverage is presented by the AT Guys online at atguys.com. This has been another Blind Bargains audio podcast. Visit blindbargains.com for the latest deals, news, and exclusive content. This podcast may not be retransmitted, sold, or reproduced without the express written permission of AT Guys. Copyright 2017.